You know, Robert from Elite Email said buying leads are bad. Listen, there's a time and a place for buying leads. Here's what you have to remember, and it comes back to that slide I showed about spam. So you go and you buy a list of leads. Hey, fantastic. Uh, you know, I'm going to buy 20,000 leads for X amount of money, and now I have a mailing list. Yay, I have a mailing list. I didn't have to do any of that fun stuff. So that's great. Well, have those people opted in? Have they given you permission? Have they said, I want to receive emails from your company? The fact of the matter is they have not. So when they get that email and they say, is this permission based or is this spam? It's a really easy answer for them. I didn't ask for this, therefore it's spam. Now that's going to do a few things. Number one, your results aren't going to be that great because you're literally sending out spam to people who didn't want your content in the first place. So the huge engagement, the huge ROI, the open, the clicks, all that goes out the window. So you're going to get way lower results. And you run the risk of your brand or organization being labeled a spammer, which again is another thing you want to avoid. So what it seems like a great shortcut to, I have no list, I'll buy leads. The fact of the matter is you're really dancing a fine line to spam. Now a lot of these list companies are going to say, no, no, we're selling you an opt-in list. I love hearing that. We're selling you an opt-in list. That's great. So let's think about that for a second. You know, John opts in to company A and says, I want to get emails from company A. Okay, fine. Company A then sells the emails to company B. You think John opted in to company B? Not at all. The whole concept of saying I'm selling you an opt-in list kind of goes out the window because the guy didn't opt-in with you, you're buying the list, you know he didn't opt-in with you. So I'm generally, if you can't tell, opposed to, to buying lists because I think it can do a lot of damage to the What I always say is there's email marketing best practices and then you have all these laws that try to kind of say what you can and can't do. So Castle is basically saying, you know, the idea of you can send someone an email as long as they can opt out. Well, that, sorry, before, before without Castle, it was you could send someone an email, but as long as they opt out and you honor that opt out, that's okay. Now they're gonna reach it, they're gonna change it to the other side, which is you have to opt in. Now, this is actually a good move, and if you've been following email marketing best practices, you've kind of been gathering opt-in contacts the whole time. Now, I don't most of the organizations who are doing opt-in are not, you don't have to re-opt-in your content. The idea is not to re-opt-in everyone. If you have an opt-in list and you have an opt-in database and they've all said they want to get your emails, you're okay. So Castle coming into effect is not going to require everyone to, to go and reconfirm. What it is going to do is say you have to take a good look at your database because now they have something like a crazy $10 million penalty if you do something bad, which they'll never enforce, just like the Can Spam Act, but it's a big scary number. But basically, you have to take a look at your email marketing and say, have we been doing opt-in or have we been doing opt-out? Do we automatically enroll people in our mailing list and therefore we're kind of pushing opt-in on them or do they actually express we want opt-in? So where this changes is a lot of companies have like a sign-up form. And we've kind of seen this happening over the last couple of years anyways. You know, so, you know, register for an account on our website. Okay, fine, and register. Well, where Castle comes into place is, is the act of registering opting in to receive your newsletter. Maybe, maybe not. So what we're seeing a lot of companies do is you have a little box. Check this if you want to receive periodic emails from us. Now, where companies are getting pretty savvy is they're just pre-checking the box. 
So real sneaky, you pre-check the box, yes, I want to receive emails, they don't uncheck it, now you have opt-in, now you grab their IP address, so now they're opt-in. I think Castle's still gonna change a little bit. Um, I was consulted a little while ago when they were kind of doing the first draft on what I thought, and I kind of told them, work towards best practices, but don't kind of, don't structure penalties around things that are like, the only people who are gonna suffer from this are the people who are trying to do things properly and make a mistake. And kind of what I told them at the time was, listen, all the spammers sending out the Viagra and hey, I, just, I have a billion dollars, can I borrow your bank account for a day just so I can park the money in there? All those guys, Castle's not gonna touch them. So that was my beef with Castle, is this law is not gonna resolve the spam problem. It's just gonna take legitimate email marketers who are trying to do things properly anyways, and try to scare them into doing things more properly. But the ones who are following best practices, we're already doing the opposite.